don't panic. It won't always feel like this. Dear 40-year-old self, there's only one thing you got really, really, really wrong. We'll talk about that later, but for now, let's talk about some other stuff. When I look back to my 30s and 40s especially, I think about how I wish I had had a, a group of friends, a circle of friends then who were at least 15 years older than me. Friends who might be able to give me some nuggets of wisdom to help me get through what ended up being fairly chaotic years in my life. When I hit 40, round about 40, there were so many things going on in my life. I was married, with two teenagers at home, my career was just taking off, and I was about to be hit by hormone changes that would completely send my life into chaos. And at the time, it absolutely felt like chaos. And as I'm thinking about it now, this is probably what people consider a midlife crisis. It's a time of your identity just really shifting and feeling like the, the rug got pulled out from under you somehow and, and trying to latch onto a new identity. And I had become completely solid with the, the mom of young children and you know budding career and all of the early stage things but now here i was in the thick of it with te like i like i said with teenagers and a, a solid career that was that was accelerating and then the whole hormonal thing and i just i didn't know what hit me and in the middle of all of this i dove into a bout of depression I had never had issues with depression before and so I didn't even really know what it was when it was happening. And so luckily I got myself into some really good therapy, worked through some things, talked to my doctor and had the support of my husband who was also going through all of his own issues. And here are the things that I wish I could go back and tell that 40 year old in the midst of depression and chaos that might have made things just a little bit easier. The first thing is, don't panic. Please don't panic. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a crisis. It is an identity shift, yes, and there are things going on in your life that you can't even begin to understand why they're happening or what the outcomes are gonna be. Don't make any huge life choices until you get to the point where you feel like, okay, I think I understand what's happening now. I have the help that I need, and now I can move forward. Don't panic. It won't always feel like this. The second thing that I would tell my 40-year-old self is to spend some time figuring out your core personal values. I did a lot of that kind of work from a corporate perspective, um, you know, figuring out, helping various companies that I worked for understand and figure out their core values as a business. I wish I had turned that mirror around and thought to myself, what are my core values? And the reason that this is so important is because when it comes time to make difficult decisions or even decisions that don't seem terribly difficult. If you don't have a solid understanding of what your core values are, the things that are really, really important to you in life, it's harder to make those decisions. And especially when they're big, life-changing decisions like to leave a job or to leave a marriage or to move to a different part of the country, all of these things that might be good things for you to do, but if you don't have a good idea of why you want to do those things, they might not ultimately be the right decisions. And there are many ways that you can go about figuring out what your core values are. One of the exercises that I learned um, in, in a, a class that I took had us go through and think about all the people in the world, alive or not alive, even real or fictional, and think about the people that you admire, the people who you aspire to be more like. Make a list of those 
of those people. Hopefully you can come up with like maybe 10 to 15 of them. A critical mass of these is, is important. Maybe put one on each page or an index card or however it is or however it is that you go about doing these things. And for each person, spend some time thinking about a word or a phrase that describes why you admire that person so much or why you would want to be like that person. I'll give you an example. Some of my people were, um, for instance, Maya Angelou. And what I admired about her was, of course, her creativity, but also her tenacity, her resilience, her strength, her um, kindness, um, her intolerance for poor behavior, the list goes on. So, um, so that was Maya, Dr. Angelou, excuse me. My mother-in-law was another one of the people on my list. My mother-in-law was wicked smart, incredibly compassionate, funny, playful, supportive, solid like a rock, at least it seemed to me, um, and so on and so forth. Make those lists for yourself. And then once you've got a list for each of those people of, of what you admire so much in those people, look at them as a whole and start to identify those attributes that come up multiple times. Maybe circle them or highlight them or whatever you do. And see where the patterns start to emerge. Maybe even rank them, which, which words come up the most. And once you can see those patterns emerge and you can make a list of let's say the top five or six things that are repeated through all of those people, that's your, that's your first step. That's your clue as to what your personal values are. There are other ways to do this as well. And I'm gonna put a link in the description to an online tool that gives you another way to think about this and walks you through the process. And I would encourage you to do both and, and to find other ways to do this as well, to really kind of come at it from different directions. This is really, really a great exercise. The things that I came up with as my core values were authenticity, compassion, humility, creativity, and independence and these since I've identified these core values I have used them to make some of my big life choices and what it does is it helps you remain true to your North Star remain true to the path that is genuine for you versus making choices for other reasons and headed in a direction that's going to cause you inner turmoil and chaos and depression and anxiety and all kinds of things later on. So get solid on what your values are. Hugely important. The third thing is mainly geared towards people who have ovaries and a uterus. And that would be, please understand and don't underestimate how impactful your hormones are on your mind, your brain, your soul, everything. When I was 40, I had really no idea, I had no idea what impact hormones and changing hormones was going to do to me. And I didn't talk to my doctor about it soon enough. We had the internet but it was like not really filled with any kind of great information at that point it was not something I used for that kind of research I didn't have a lot of friends who have gone through menopause or anything that I could talk to about it and it wasn't just the menopause it was um it was a time in my life where I came off of birth control and the birth control I had been on was hormone based and that in combination with my hormones beginning to change, like I had no clue. It just hit me out of the blue. And I'm still not an expert on hormones or menopause or birth control or any of that. 
And so I'm not going to try to give you advice, any specific advice on that, other than understand the impact that it can have and do what you need to do to help mitigate that. The fifth thing is to understand and remember that sometimes we need to go through crisis in order to have a fundamental shift in something that's broken in our lives. This is true from a personal level. It's often true from a more global societal change level. But when you're going through any kind of, of really difficult time or crisis or turmoil in your life, especially during midlife when, when we might write it off as, oh, it's a midlife crisis, I'll get over it. Think about how what you're going through is going to inform who you are later in life. What are the lessons you can learn from this crisis? How can you grow through this crisis? As human beings, we very rarely make significant growth changes in ourself when we come from a place of comfort. When everything's going well, you can make incremental changes, but the sea change kind of, kind of shifts really happen during extreme discomfort and even crisis. And for me personally, there were a number of different kinds of crises that happened between, you know, my late 30s and my early 50s. And they will continue to happen, of course, because that's life. And what I would really want my prior versions of myself to know is that these crises aren't just times that suck. They're going to make you who you are. They're going to make you stronger. They're going to make you more compassionate. They're going to make you smarter. They're going to make you make changes in your life that will pay dividends for years to come. There are so many good things that come out of these crises. Do I wish that things might have been a little bit easier? Yeah, of course. We don't like crappy things to happen to us. But they're going to happen. And if you can make sure you grab those nuggets of wisdom and growth opportunities when they do happen, it won't be for naught. And let me get back to that one thing that my 40-year-old self got completely wrong. I mean, I wasn't even close. That one thing is the thought that the prime of my life was in my rearview mirror. I thought my 20s and 30s were it. I had a lot of fun in my 20s and 30s. I did a lot of really great things. I had a really fun time. I raised my kids like they were brilliant, beautiful years. And they were not the prime of my life. I'll tell you what, if you asked me every year for the last few years, when's the prime of your life? I'd say, well, right now, absolutely right now. And I think next year will be even better and next year will be even better than that. And so that's the nugget. The one thing I wish I could tell my 40 year old self, you haven't even yet begun to have your best years.